Good morning. Welcome to Worship with Pleasantville Presbyterian Church. We're glad that you've joined us this morning, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Come, let us worship our living God. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Ever present God, there is no place where you are not with us. You see us at our worst and at our best. There is much we hide from you. The ways we harm your creation, the ways we mistreat others, the ways we turn away when we should turn toward. Even as you know us, forgive us. Guide our thoughts, our words, our actions, that you may delight in us as we delight in you. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. As far as the east is from the west, so far has God removed our transgressions from us. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is God's love for us. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Friends, let us greet one another with the peace of Christ. Peace to everybody. May the peace be with you. May the peace be with you. 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 Peace be with you, everyone. Peace be with you. From Romans 8. For the creation waits with eager, longing for the revealing of the children of God. For the creation was subjected to futility, not of its own will, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and will obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor, pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope, for who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it 
with patience. The word of the Lord. What's happening, everyone, and welcome to the Children's Sermon. A very important question to ask you this morning, and this applies to all the kids out in the room and also the big kids out in the room, maybe thinking back when they were a littler kid in the room. <laughs> so here's the, here's the question. You ready? Do you kiss your mom and dad goodnight or your parents goodnight? So I ask this because a ki- there, there can be a lot of types of kisses out there in the world. And we're going to be talking about these kind of kisses today. And so one of those kisses is a goodnight kiss, maybe to your parents or your or your guardians, right? And so a kiss can have so many meanings. Um, A kiss goodnight is just like a, okay, signing off for the day and and expressing some affection for your family members or a kissing greeting. Like if you think about the European style, it's like, hey, bellissima, buongiorno, kissing on both sides, like to say good morning or to see a friend that you haven't seen before, an expression of excitement. Um, It could be a kiss of the hand, a nice gesture of gentlemanly to, um, to, to a lady perhaps in like medieval times that we've seen or old school as people like to do so today. A kiss on the cheek, a kiss to begin marriage, right? That usually closes out a ceremony. Um, however, there's also like crazy things like the kiss of death where we see like the grim reaper coming and you know, that's the last kiss that says end somebody's life or something. Um, there's a kiss of betrayal we see in the Bible. A kiss can also be betrayal when Judas went and kissed Jesus on the cheek to signify that he was the one that the soldiers should take. And there's also the kiss of life, when God first kissed Adam to breathe life through his nostrils. So a kiss can have so many meanings. We want to look at some of those meanings today. All right. So lots of meanings, right? We've already seen this. It can be it can mean new life. It can mean harmony. It can mean love and affection. Uh, it can mean trust. I mean, you have to bring your face really close to somebody else's. It could mean peace. Uh, and, and really, though, in any of these circumstances, what it also means is bringing two things together, two people together or two emotions together or something It brings things together. And that's what our focus is today. So we're trying to understand this reading from the Bible and thinking about this kiss, thinking about what a kiss symbolizes. And I want to share the, the reading with you, which we'll hear a little bit more thoroughly. But um, really, the takeaway is that it says here in, in the psalm that we're learning today that if we listen to God, then all kind of good things will come together. And check this thing out. This is what it says. So from from Psalm, it says, love and faithfulness meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Faithfulness springs forth from the earth and righteousness looks down from heaven. So how cool is this? When When we have this like tender moment, if we listen and if we act upon what God's trying to teach us to do, to have faith, to, to live by love, uh, to, to have a mindset of righteousness, right? good morals, and, and trying to assume the best in, in each other and forgive each other. If we can do these, then some of the most amazing things in life, these, these emotions, these things, come together in the most tender way, like in a kiss. And we want to think of it, I know sometimes I think of it like this, like, here's another way a kiss can come into play. This is kind of like God's masterpiece when we're like the heaven and the earth or when we do his, when we listen to him and we do his plan, it's like, he's having, he's having a tender moment with us. He's like kissing us. And he's say, kind of saying like, you've become my masterpiece. You've, you've become everything that I want you to, to become. You are my humble and faithful servant. And he's kind of like being like, Mwah! that was a beautiful masterpiece. Can't you see God just like super happy? Just Mwah! Oh, so good. So I want to think today, if we can listen to God and do these things, it's kind of like that kiss of masterpiece. All right. So today, our takeaway, we want it to be uh, being able to listen to God and follow through on his teachings. Because if we can do that, righteousness, faithfulness, peace, love all come together in these little moments. And they might only be a moment, like a kiss only lasts a few moments, but it's totally worth it, right? So that being said, The last thing I want to close with is if you haven't kissed your mom or dad goodnight in a week or recently, make sure you do that as well. (laughs) Let's close in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you so much for giving us the knowledge and, and this beautiful imagery and the symbolism of what a kiss can be if we listen to you and do the things that you've taught us. Lord, we pray that we can just continue to be kissing um, these things together, bringing these things together so we can, we can live the masterpiece that you have in mind for our lives. In your name we say,
about to hear takes place after Jacob stole the blessing that was meant for his brother Esau. This is what happens right after Jacob runs away. Jacob left Beersheba and went toward Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the ladder, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up on the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring, and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth. And you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go and will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, surely the Lord is in this place and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning and he took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. Dear God, may the words of my mouth and the listening ears of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This beautiful dream that has given birth to songs and paintings, the setting for when this dream is given to Jacob, it's actually a story of grave family dysfunction. Jacob had this dream in the middle of the night during his journey running away from what he did to his father, Isaac, fooling him into giving him the blessing that belonged to his brother Esau. And really, he was running for his life from his brother, who was bigger and stronger and pretty angry at this point that Jacob had stolen from him twice. And if you look again at the scriptures, you come to the uncomfortable realization that he did all this because his mother, Rebecca, told him to do it. Into that messiness comes a dream. A dream that gives Jacob the sense that even though he is now alone and away from home, he still has an identity and a place in the world. He has laid his head down on a place of land that feels like a passageway to God, where he dreams of angels coming back and forth into the world. 
Step by step, the angels come through a place he called Bethel, a dwelling place for God. And in that space, Jacob is given a blessing from God. This morning, I'm wondering if we can relate in any way to what Jacob was experiencing in this moment of having to run from everything and everyone he knew. Can we picture a place of desolation in life in this world? Maybe our own version of being sent out on our own to start over, to figure out our lives. Maybe it was the end of a relationship or in the moment of transition between a school or a work environment, going into a new chapter that feels isolated from what we knew before. If we relate in any way to what Jacob was experiencing, maybe we can begin to imagine the hope that this dream brought to him. So how do we feel about dreams? Do we think of them as a way that God communicates? Do we listen to them to discern if there is something in them we need to hear? That is on the occasions when we remember them. Have you ever had a dream that made you wake up and take notice and go in a different way? Sometimes I have nightmares that tell me there's a path I need to pay attention to that is making me feel separated from God. Usually they are dreams in which I feel as though I cannot scream for help. Sometimes those nightmares feel as though they come from nowhere, but other times I can see that they can help me find a different pathway if I pay attention to them. And what about thin places? The Celtic concept that certain places on earth feel somehow closer to God. That there is something in those places in which the veil between earth and the hereafter is thinner. It seems that Jacob was lifting up this spot on the earth as that kind of holy ground. There's a book called Braving the Thin Places by Juliana Stans. She says thin places are where God's grace is waiting to happen, where God and humanity meet in a mysterious way. In her version, the thin places are not just physical places. They are any places in our lives, in our relationship, in our prayers, where we recognize that God is meeting us. That title, Braving the Thin Places, I like the acknowledgement in that title that going toward an encounter with God in the way we do when we embrace the thin places, whether we find them in nature or a fresh chapter in our story, when we say yes to moving toward a thin place, we are acting in bravery. We are going in hope, traveling in a spirit of courage, opening ourselves to an encounter with God that might just change us forever. For Jacob, Prior to this moment in time, he had been with his clearly troubled family. But it was what he knew, where he was comfortable. The dream, the thin place, told him that though he was no longer in the place he knew best, he was walking into a world that still belonged to God. A world where he still had an identity to live into and a life to embrace. The real and true blessing in his life did not have to come from stealing it. The blessing came from opening himself up to a relationship with God. The blessing came from following God into a new beginning, trusting that there would always be more to it in his life than what it looked like on the surface. We too are blessed to be in a relationship with God who breaks into the world in a variety of ways, meeting us where we are, showing up in our lives. This is the hope we have in Christ, that God showed up in Jesus to say, my love for you brings forgiveness and grace into your life and into your hearts. Listen to him, learn from him. Let the way he walks in the world meet you where you are and show you the way. May it be so for you and for me. In Jesus' name, amen.
Let us pray. Dear God, today we pray for all the ways we are challenged to try to find a new path, to try to see a new way to walk in the world. We pray for those this morning who are on the journey to Appalachia, that as they grow and learn together, they might be instruments of your love and peace in the world. We pray for those this summer who are finding a new way forward, who are looking and trying to understand where the doors might be open. We pray for those who are ill and need your healing touch. We pray for those who are grieving and need to be comforted. We pray for those who are struggling with addiction. Help them to know that you walk with them every step of the journey. We pray in trust and in faith and in hope. Let us pray together as Jesus taught us saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us go forward from this place, certain in our knowledge of the love of God, the peace of Christ Jesus, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.